Today we're gonna take a look at my loadout, what I would use if I were to do a war right now. Obviously what I would use would kind of change depending on what the game type is, but for the most part if I were to do dart wars or a park war or anything like that, what you're about to see is what I'm going to use, permitting that the people let me run it. And a lot of you are going to tilt your heads at this because you won't understand why I choose this stuff and you'll instantly think I'm some kind of crazy person who has no idea what they're talking about. And I'm here to tell you that I have a good idea of what I'm talking about because I have hours and hours and hours and dozens of hours under my belt when it comes to warring. Now most of that is Dart Wars stuff, but Dart Wars is a good benchmark for me because I played against a lot of different people using a variety of styles and a huge variety of blasters. So let's get down right into it. First we need something to carry all of our gear and for me that is my Nerf Battle Belt which I have a video on. Now this thing is a tool belt. It is a framing tool belt. The funny thing about my original Nerf Battle Belt video is I went back and returned that one and got a different belt. This one is a little bit different because it's a framer's belt, which has a lot of pockets and stuff on it. Now, in its form right now, it is bone stock. It would help, but it's not perfect. I haven't done any heavy modifications to it because I haven't had a reason to sit down and actually go over what I'm gonna do with it. But if I had to make a guess, it'd be flaps covering pouches like that so I could hold darts effortlessly and a whole bunch of other stuff. The one thing I have done to it is of course, cut up the, the little cell phone holder here, which not many people use flip phones anymore anyway, so what does it matter? But the reason I did that is because I virtually always have my stone wall sword on me, or the dagger in this case. I haven't had a game yet that wouldn't let me use this. It is a very resilient but very safe foam weapon, and while I can use it to like stab and do all that kind of stupid stuff, which you probably never do, throwing it, this thing has tagged a lot of people on. It is very, very, very deadly, and I choose to use it as much as possible. In fact, I've gotten entire teams out with this thing at Dart Wars, because once it hits someone, I can just pick it back up and go about my business. If not, if I can't use it, it's a nice little decoration. There's a lot of slots on this thing, and of course I can attach the many, many jolts I own, but in its stock form, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty bare bones right now. But it does have some neat features. For example, if I want to run, let me find the pouch here, yeah, here it is. Let's say I want to run something ridiculous like the Burst Wave. I got a pouch to hold it. Not many people can say anything about that. And yes, the Burst Wave. Where does this fit in my grand scheme of things? Well, this is of course modded. The pump has been plugged, the tank has been reinforced, and everything's been done to it to give it the maximum amount of pop. But you're thinking to yourself, it's Boomco. What are you doing? Well, I have tons of Boomco darts. I have tons of Boomco darts. I've bought dozens of clips on sale. I've bought darts at Goodwill for a dollar. They even go on sale very frequently online because, well, there's a lot of them and not many people are buying them, which is a complete shame, but it's good for me. This is awesome because that makes this a very, very practical blaster in my opinion. I get three shots and this is one of the quickest reloading shotguns I've ever seen, but the overall profile is very small and I can reload two barrels twice if I want to keep this thing topped up on the sides here. But this is absolutely scary when it's fully pumped up. And of course you would pump this thing and then leave it in a pouch, which makes it a secondary in my opinion. This thing can punch insane ranges. In fact, when I directly compared it to my modified Snapfire 8, which we know is pushing on average about 97 FPS, this cleared it. It was at an angle and so was the Snapfire, but this easily cleared it. And flat, the spread is ridiculous. This is a one shot, one kill. Basically anybody within 50 feet's done. You cannot dodge this thing. And it is scary. I'm gonna have some footage that's gonna kind of pop up. I don't know how I'm gonna splice it in quite yet, but you will see the range on this thing is scary. And of course, it lets out a big gap of smoke every single time I fire it and it, it just feels amazing. So this is what I would run as a secondary. It's something that is kind of a specialty blaster. I would really only wanna use it if somebody is within its range. So it's not something I can really rely on all that much, 
but I know when I use it, it's gonna be a guaranteed tag. So you pump it up, switch the turret, and put away in that pouch. And I'll probably have to have some kind of fastener on there to keep it in there when I'm running, but you get the idea. Which leaves me to what would I be using as a primary? This is my primary, and I know a lot of you are kind of shaking your head or clicking off the video, and I would ask you to hold on a little bit because I'm gonna blow your freaking mind. I promise you, I'm gonna blow your freaking mind. So obviously your primary is what your entire loadout revolves around, and that's what this is. This is a very, very effective blaster. It is insane. This would absolutely cover the entirety of Dart Wars without even trying. And it's probably the most dangerous blaster I've ever had. The only thing that's even gonna remotely compete is if you have a crazy NIC spring level blaster with a full K26 and custom internals shooting amazing step-ins. That's the only way you're gonna be able to keep up with this thing. No stock flywheeler, no, no modified flywheeler, no nothing is going to keep up with this thing. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, the power is insane. And two, it's shooting Boomco darts. I know a lot of you don't really understand the Boomco thing. I've talked about two Boomco blasters and the more astute among you would realize there's a third Boomco blaster around behind me and we will get to that. But a Nerf dart has some inherent problems. Now this is an FVJ, this is about as good as they come. But the main issue with these things is that they aren't very reliable. And I say that because there's always gonna be some sort of little imperfection on this that's going to affect accuracy and distance. And the worst part about foam darts are they get stepped on, they get shot against a wall too hard, or just the weather, the time of day, the, how much humidity is in the air. If it's Tuesday, if you're wearing the color green, these darts get affected by stuff. You can minimize that if you buy stuff like Kushas and of course FBJs, but there's a lot of problems in using these kinds of darts. Boomco darts don't have that problem. These things work every single time and they can take so much abuse that in the entirety of me running them and I've ran a Rapid Madness and a Stealth Ambush and a Far Shot at Dart Wars for a very long time, every single time I've only ever had one of these fail and that was recently when it was shot out of this thing. The head kind of came undone and of course air was escaping through it and that was the end. I probably could have shot the tip off of it, but they're generally well made. now. Ignoring the fact that they have the smart stick gimmick, these darts are straws, but they're a very, very flexible rubbery straw. It's not the brittle stuff that you get with your freaking whatever, whenever you get straws like from Walmart or any kind of fast food meal. They're a rubbery material and the head is rubber. Now it's a very soft rubber. It moves effortlessly in my hand. I can squish it and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't really hurt all that much when it hits you, but the weight distribution, almost everything is in the tip. And when you put it in one of these blasters, well, it makes a perfect seal virtually every single time. And while you do get some crazy fish tailing out of the actual tail on the dart, 99% of the time, I would say, you get the tip going exactly where you want it and the end kind of fish tails for a little bit and then straightens up and hits exactly where you want it. Now it can, you know, be affected by wind and stuff like that, just like a standard foam dart, but it's still a very, very, very powerful round. And that's the reason why people love Boomco blasters so much. And what makes this pistol just so deadly is it's cheap, it's easy to modify, and I've never seen a blaster this small, even a Panther cannot keep up with this pistol. It is utter insanity. I, you're going, to, if you have not faced one of these on any kind of uh, Nerf battlefield, uh, you're in for a world of pain because I've tested this. My, my friend PJ, the well monster who shows up every once in a while, and he was here when I did the Drunk Boomco thing, we have spent hours just shooting each other in the parking lot with these things because they're so much fun. They're so accurate and the darts themselves are incredibly hard to see coming at you. And the best part is if you're running Boomco darts with everything, you don't have to worry about anybody really stealing your darts. And thankfully, I have hundreds of them, so it's never really been an issue for me. Now you might notice my Halo pistol looks kind of ugly, and that's a little bit uh, different. I usually like my blasters to look pretty, but the reason why it's so ugly 
is because I covered it in sandpaper. It's 80 grit sandpaper, which really, really helps on the prime for me. And it's insane that if you could tell how hard it was hitting the wall, that was all the way over there, about 20 feet. It's like it, bam, I love it. This thing is amazing and my entire loadout revolves around it. So this is where I blow your mind. So you're thinking, well, I'm just gonna get close to you when you're reloading or something like that. Even though this is a pretty quick reload, I have to say. But if I'm running the shotgun as a secondary, I can sit outside of your range all day taking pot shots at you. And these are very, very deadly. And if you're within any hope of hitting me with even the most insanely modified flywheel blaster you could possibly have, not only can I outrange you, but at that distance, let's say that 90, 80, 85, 90 foot distance, I'm being very generous here, and you just unload an entire 18 dart magazine, this thing is probably going to hit you first. It just, bam, blasts right through everything. And the closer you are, the deadlier it is because the darts fly so fast. Nerf darts have a tendency to lose their velocity rather quickly, but Boomco darts, for whatever reason, tend to stay in the fight much longer. They tend to sail forever. In fact, I've lost Boomco darts shooting it out of this thing, so. I don't know what else to say. That's why this thing is my primary. I can take shots at you all day loading this thing. I'm not really burning through ammo any that bad either. It's a much easier than some guy with a modified rapid strike with an afterburner and Koosh darts who's trying to burst fire at me, not even getting near me, and I'm still making him dodge. And then if he gets close enough, it's boom, another dart, boom, another dart. And if he gets within the kill zone of his blaster, where it pretty much is impossible for me to dodge it, we're talking like that 65, 70 foot range where he can barely angle the blaster and just hail fire me with darts, that's where the burst wave comes in. I just pick this thing up and I go, okay, Quickly pick it up, fire off a shot, he's gone. End of story. Now, can I take on multiple people with this setup? Not really. It's not meant for that. That's not the way I play the game. I don't run into a room and hope to clear everybody else. I like to pick people off as much as I can. That doesn't mean I don't want to be competent in this situation, and that's where my third blaster comes in. Whether you want to call this a secondary or another primary or whatever is up to you, but this is the K26 brake flip. Now I have range tested this thing and surprisingly enough, when pitted against the Snapfire 8 with the Tech 6 spring, which I know is hitting around 97 FPS, which is on the high side that we're talking, that is overhauled, that, that's insane. That's overhauled Orange Mardworks kit retaliator levels. Those can hit anywhere from 95 to 110. This is gonna hit about that good, but the thing with this is, I've got this, and this is gonna look incredibly ugly to you, but bear with me. Now, this should be rather obvious, but Zombona developed something that's called a sniper clip. He put the concept out there, where you fill up the air release holes with some kind of adhesive, and that obviously extends the barrel length, essentially, of your blaster, which helps you build up more velocity. It's kind of weird because it's not very much of an expansion, but it works really, really well. And that's why this clip is covered in DevCon. The way you do this is you, you just take your Boomco darts and put them in there and you smother it full of any kind of MMA, the meth, the, the multi meth acrylic or whatever adhesive DevCon basically. And then you let it dry, the darts, you can pull them right out. It doesn't stick to the darts and well, you get a huge power gain. Now, obviously this has a K26 in it, so it's already hitting pretty hard, but with the sniper clip inside of it, it's incredible. Uh, this thing, I, I don't even know where to begin. It is not hitting as hard as this, obviously, and it's a little bit more powerful than this, which is an air-powered monstrosity, but it's still hitting insanely good. And the best part about that is A, it's clip fed. I got clips in there, it's an eight dark clip, but I can obviously do this in 20 or even 40s, depending on how much Devicon I want to use. But with this, it becomes a very, very compact, small, accurate, fast firing rifle. Because of course I can 
very effortlessly and I don't want to do that too much because I don't want to break it, but you get the idea. Now, something like this, uh, well, it's kind of awkward to carry around if I'm going to have a longer clip in it. Not a huge deal if I make sure that the clip is only on one side the way it feeds in. And if I want to, you know, socket it something, let's say I want to put it on my back, something stupid like that. Not that I recommend you do that, but in this case, I don't really have much of a choice. I could make a holster that has a slot for the clip to stick out. But in most cases, if I'm going to use this, I generally know what's coming. I know that my pistol and I know the shotgun isn't going to help me. And in this situation, basically what I would do is I would just have this in a pouch on me. And if I needed it, I would whip out the brake flip. It's a pretty compact package, all things considered. Whip out a clip, stuff the clip in there, and I'm good to go. Very, 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 very easy to do. I cannot overstate that enough. It's a very simple process for me to just pull out a clip, slap it in there, cock once, and I'm good to go. And with that, I can clear out any number of people I want to. And again, with the Boomco darts, I've got a lot of advantages. I'm gonna be more accurate with the slam fire, which is not hard to do. It looks like my muzzle's moving a lot, but it resets its position every single time. But it's really hard to see the darts fly through the air, and that's the best part of the Boomco rounds, besides the fact that they're super durable, and I never have to worry about them getting damaged. So while I can count on, like if I was in an HVZ game, eventually, pretty quickly, people who are scavenging darts off the ground, well, they're gonna start running into feeding issues every so often. In fact, as time starts to go on, they're gonna be running into all sorts of problems. These clips are really easy to reload, in my case. They, again, it's dead simple. I don't have to do anything but just slap it in there. In fact, we can test it with a 40. Let's say I wanted to uh, use one of the 40s. Well, as long as I have it on the right side. Let's say I want to use it. Ah, there we go. Now, let's try that again. I mean, if I was in a huge hurry, it'd be a little bit more difficult because these are the old clips. They don't have any of that stopping mechanism in there. Just like that, I might waste two or three darts, but you get it. It's really easy for me to do. And I'm ready to go. And I have 40 rounds. Did I mention that? This is a 40 dart clip. It's about the size of the blaster. Really easy to keep together in the same bag if I wanted it to. And yet it doesn't take very long for me to get together whatsoever. And that leaves me pretty lightweight, all things considered. Of course, I'm going to have a clip. Now, I probably only need the three of these or four of these. I can't remember how many of the 40 dart clips I have. I probably only need those because that's over a hundred and something darts. And without really having to worry all that much about reloading or doing anything crazy. There we go. 40 darts. And these are high powered and these are going to be more accurate and fly farther than pretty much any nerf dart. So there's a lot to love with Boomco and I don't have any footage. I'm not traveling the games right now. I have some issues with the Jeep that prevents me from just going where I want right now, which is a shame. I'm working on fixing that and thankfully the channel is doing well. I can't thank you guys enough about that. And soon enough, we'll be going to having to, where are we going? We're going to be having a giveaway to thank you guys for this absolutely insane premise that I'm able to do this channel. I get a little off topic, but you get it. When I'm talking about stuff like this, a lot of you may tune out, but I know you guys can watch my long videos and I know you guys can pay attention to that. And this is something where I'm dead serious. You can get wrecked by something like this. Now, this is pretty much the pinnacle of everything and I don't even know where to begin. It's kind of killed my enthusiasm to make other stuff. I, it's insane, because like anything I make in Nerf, like even if I made a Panther, it's not gonna hit this hard. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm still doing it, I wanna make cool stuff, but I, I don't know how to say it in any other way. If you're watching this video, if you've sat through all 20 something minutes of it, you need to make one of these. You need to make one. It costs you virtually nothing. K26, kind of hard to come by. Okay, I get it. If you can't find a, another seller, well, you could try contacting Duke Wintermull. I did that. He sent me some 120 FPS springs. Now, I don't have a chronograph and I'm working on that with the YouTube monies, obviously. I can get something like that very soon. But triple spring far shots, again, same thing. 
that's three far shots, which some of you guys can even find them at thrift stores, but even if you bought them full price. Let's say you went out and bought one of these pistols and two far shots, a dual defender pack. Well, the dual defender pack at Toys R Us and Target and stuff like that is 10 bucks. This pistol, anywhere from 10 to 14. Okay, that costs you as much as maybe, I don't know, a freaking retaliator. This is gonna outrange it. An artifact kit can't even keep up with this thing. That's why this thing's my primary. You know, the more you practice with it, you get a feel for it, you can tell, you can practice your reloading. It's really, it's, it's insane. I, I can't talk about this a month and I've built my entire loadout around that fact. Now, I don't have anything else to show for that, but my loadout will most likely include something like melee. Now, if I wanted to have the gun blade, if I were to finish that thing, because I did take it apart recently to try to work on that, the clowny guitar, which you'll see a video on very soon, as soon as I get it done, or even like the sword art online swords, a strike blade or a machine gun offer, anything like that, I would most likely carry melee because I like to melee. That's kind of like what I do. That's what got me more into nerf was the fact that I was doing a lot of amp guard stuff. So when I, I, I can't say it enough. When I say something like this is incredible, like these were 10 bucks at Toys R Us. It takes 15 minutes to modify it virtually no effort what's it doesn't take hot glue i think hot glue can be used to reinforce that arm and get it working when i said stuff like this was amazing i couldn't explain it enough and i have footage i'm, I'm showing you footage right now it's hard to see because gopros kind of suck for that and ugh. but you get it it's it's hitting ridiculously hard and i can't get over even if you want to lightly pump this thing up and just clear out stuff in front of you, it's good. And if you just want to go crazy, then you can. And that's the best part of this. Instant reload. Look at that cloud of smoke. This tank just puts out an enormous amount of power. Oh, man. I've gushed about all three of my blasters. I don't know what else you want from me. When I said the Boomco Brake Flip was the best blaster, this is kind of the afterthought video. This is what I wanted to explain. And that wasn't even counting the fact that it's been modified, but when people were, do you know, the clip feeds out the side, it's stupid, blah, blah, blah. I can reload this faster than anything else I have. And it holds 40 freaking darts with slam fire and everything like that. Or accurate shots if you want them. The sight is really easy. There's no, you know, obviously there's no iron sights or anything, but there's not much in your way, it's just a flat top rail on top of that. So if I wanted to absolutely trick someone, I can. And since they're reasonably accurate, that works out reasonably well for me. 40 darts. It's the size of an 18 round mag. 40 darts. Excellent power and accuracy with slam fire. This video has gone on long enough. I don't know what else to say, but Thank you very much for watching this. I hope I've explained why Boomco is great. And if you have any questions or any suggestions down in the comment boxes below, let me know, please. <sighs> I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like Boomco, hit that like button. If you hate Boomco and it's nerf or nothing, the dislike button's there for you as well, but you're wrong. I'm just going to say that right now. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in an entirely different one.